Hi, this is Chrome Salvaterra from Good Aikido. When I started Aikido, I didn't realize that there were so many flavors to Aikido. So how did this happen, right? Well, let me tell you a very quick story on the history of Aikido. History of Aikido. After World War II, or sensei or Morihei Uyushiba, uh, retired in Iwama. He was also old by that stage, but he retired in Iwama because for the lack of a better word, he was aghast at what he saw in World War II, the violence and all that kind of stuff. So he retired in Iwama, a country town in the Ibaraki prefecture, about a hundred um, kilometers north of Tokyo. There he establishes new dojo and probably contemplated on what the hell just happened in World War II. That's pretty intense, right? Witnessing that. So he went to the forest, the mountains. He was even known as the crazy man yelling in the middle of the, um, of the mountain because people would hear his kiai. Maybe it is through meditation. Maybe it's who knows. But one thing is for sure. He infused his beliefs and philosophies into his old art. The old art was Aiki Jujutsu, Sokoku Takeda, or he was O Sensei's teacher. And O Sensei learned his Aiki from him. So after World War II, um, O Sensei went to Iwama. And there he farmed and he trained. That's pretty much what he did, right? Um, one of the stories that was, has been passed now from generation to generation, he got challenged there by different officers, Kendo, Sumo, and all these different martial arts. One time he was, um, he was attacked by a live sword and he blended, he said he didn't get hit at all until the guy that attacked him, which is an officer, got tired and gave up. He went to the fountain outside and he washed his face. He washed his face with water. And then from then on, he went, okay. He probably got enlightened with, with, with an experience like that. So why am I telling you this? From, because from that point onwards in time, Aiki Jujutsu starts changing into Aikido. Right. So from that point onwards, O Sensei started changing Aiki Jujutsu, which is this highly effective and can be brutal, it can be a brutal martial art, into Aikido, which means the harmonic way or the harmony way. It doesn't really translate well in English, but that's the closest thing. Aikido was born in Iwama. After World War II, Tokyo was, was severely damaged, right? So a lot of his students went to Iwama and followed him there, right? There, he taught a lot of students and those students became masters themselves. And each student, picked up a version of the Aikido that O Sensei was teaching at a particular time. Yeah. Aikikai was headed by Kishamaru Uyeshiba, Doshu, he was the son of O Sensei. He looked after the Tokyo Dojo and he did a really good job, a really, really good job, making sure that that dojo and that movement there stayed and, and, and thrive. And look at them, they're, they're the biggest organized in Aikido now. Another flavor of Aikido is Yoshinka. It was developed after World War II by Gozo Shioda Sensei. Uh, that, uh, Yoshinkan is known as the riot police. So if you read the book, Angry White Pajamas, they're talking about the Yoshinkan style of Aikido. That was developed. Um, after World War II, 
And if you look at the movements and the form of Yoshinkan, it, it closely resembles Aiki Jujutsu and Aiki Toriyu. Now let's go to Tomiki Aikido or Shodokan Aikido. O Sensei had really an amazing student pre-World War II, and that is Kenji Tomiki Sensei. He is also, or he was also Jigaro Kano's student, the founder of Judo. So Jigaro Kano and O Sensei shared a, a lot of students, but most notable of them all is Kenji Tomiki. Kenji Tomiki taught Aikido in, I think, Waseda University. And what he did was his thoughts were if he taught a version of Aikido that is a sports version, that is, that has comp competition, the, the deeper aspects of Aikido will eventually come up. A later style or flavor of Aikido is Tenshi Aikido. And this one is from Steven Seagal, Sensei. Steven Seagal is, I thank him by the way, because his movies made me want to do Aikido. I wanted to do his moves. That's why I wanted in search for Aikido. So Steven Seagal Sensei started his school in Japan first and eventually he went to to, uh, to the US and there his school thrived. Another flavor of Aikido is Ki Aikido that was founded by Tohei Sensei. So let me give you a little background of the history on that one. Tohei Sensei, he focused on a lot was the relationship of Ki and Aikido. So in case you know what Ki is, it is Chi, also known as Chi, also known as Prana. And if you're like me, uh, a Christian, I'm Catholic, uh, we call it Holy Spirit or just Spirit. So he focused on the key aspect of Aikido. He still had techniques, but he believed in the softness and the beauty of Ki to the point where sometimes he got, uh, Ki Aikido got criticized that it lost its martial form. That, that's another debate, which I don't want to enter because that could go on for hours. The first Aikido I did was Ki Aikido in the Philippines. That's when I was still in high school, like early, early, early high school. I was a boxing guy, I was a karate guy. And one thing led to another, I discovered Aikido. I saw Steven Seagal movies in the late eighties. I just wanted to do Aikido. And the Aikido that I found in the school I went to was Ki Aikido. I didn't even know back then that it was, what's the difference with all these schools? Let's go back to O Sensei's Aikido. Remember I told you, he went to Iwama to retire and he transformed Aiki Jujutsu into Aikido and he stayed there until, well, he passed. One of his students was Morihiro Saito Sensei. Heard of the stories of a, of a loud man, crazy man even, that was yelling in the mountains and in the forest of Iwama. And he was so curious. And one day he saw a demonstration of O Sensei's Aikido and he was blown away. Saito Sensei was like, okay, I need to do that. And Saito Sensei served and learned from O Sensei for 25 years. Think about that for a minute. Saito Sensei trained with O Sensei for 25 years. And he saw the evolution of O Sensei's Aikido from Aiki Jujutsu and going to Aikido, right? Another thing that Saito Sensei experienced that you probably cannot see in the other Aikido schools, the introduction of weaponry. Weaponry, you say? Well, yeah, Boken and Joe. 
O Sensei developed his style of Jo and swordmanship in Iwama. Yeah, he probably knew how to do it. And a lot of his students probably knew or learned from him. But during the Iwama days is when that part of the Aikido training got cemented. Okay. And Saito Sensei was there. And let's go back now to what is Iwama Ryu? Iwama Ryu essentially is the original Aikido. Iwama Ryu has essentially two parts. Bukiwaza, which means weapons training, yeah, or weapons technique. And that is the Jo, Tanto, and the Boken. In good Aikido, we train this too. The second part of Iwama Ryu is Taijutsu, or body techniques also known as in the Western world, hand to hand, just no weaponry. That is Iwamariyu or Sensei's Aikido. Why would you train Iwamariyu over the other Aikido? If I'm going to learn Aikido, I would love to do O Sensei's Aikido. Plain and simple. And I've been very, very, very blessed to have the best teachers I learned from Nick Morelli, Sensei, Roger Gibson Sensei, and Hitohiro, Saito Sensei. And I'm thankful that the Aikido that they taught me is what I'm going to bring to this table, the good Aikido. Well, I hope this video helps you in understanding the many flavors of Aikido.